We're hopping into the eighth unit out of nine in the AP World CED. We're going to set the stage for the Cold War and decolonization and get us into that Cold War. So what do you need to know starting out here? First, hopes for greater self-government were going largely unfulfilled following the First World War. But it's the Second World War and the increasing anti-imperialist sentiments that rise out of it that will contribute to the dissolution of, of, of long-lasting empires like the British Empire and the French Empire and the restructuring of states around the world. Um, we'll also see technological and economic gains experienced during World War II by the victorious nations that start to shift the global balance of power. And that's heading towards the United States and the Soviet Union. So let's give a closer look to that end of the Second World War and how we're going to set this stage for a Cold War controversy. The last year of the Second World War will bring the United States and the Soviet Union from wartime allies to ultimately Cold War adversaries. Both the United States and the Soviet Union are looking for the exact same thing. They want security in a post-war world but each of them see security coming from two different places. First, the United States, that they see security around the world and for themselves coming from the spread of democratic institutions and free market trade policies. The more democratic states are and the more states will trade with each other, the less likelihood of widespread conflict. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, who had experienced a massive invasion by Germany in 1941, see land acquisition as um, uh, the only way to prevent uh, future invasions of the Soviet Union and the way to provide that security that they are looking for. This comes to a head in the immediate aftermath of World War II, where Joseph Stalin's promises of free elections in Poland and other Eastern European nations never came to fruition, and an aura of suspicion is going to grow between those two parties that we will call the Cold War. Now, we're going to see the end of, of long-lasting empires um, in the years after World War II. So after World War I, the, the hopes of colonial peoples for independence were going to go unfounded. But World War II is going to reignite that push for independence from colonial rule. Know the word self-determination. This is that idea of, uh, that a people has a right to determine for themselves the form of government they want to be a part of. Um, and this is going to grow during and after World War I and World War II. Following the Second World War, movements for self-determination will be emboldened by the fact that the war was fought to liberate Europe from, uh, and Asia from imperialist nations like Germany and Japan. And it seems kind of hypocritical to say that the imperialism of Germany and Japan is bad, but the imperialism of Britain and France can just continue. European colonial powers then, like Britain, France, the Netherlands, are going to be weakened by the war, and they've got a more difficult time in resisting the independence movements that will grow. The Cold War is also going to give anti-colonial activists um, the, the superpowers, whether it be the United States or the Soviet Union, to recruit as supporters for their independence movement, because both the US and the Soviet Union are going to be looking for allies in this new post-war world. We also need to recognize that that global balance of economic and political power is going to shift during and after the Second World War, and it's going to rapidly evolve into, into the Cold War. The democratic United States and the authoritarian communist Soviet Union will emerge as those superpowers, and they'll lead an ideological conflict and power struggle between the capitalist world and the communist world, and it'll spread to all corners of the globe. But many, including the non-aligned movement, will oppose and promote alternative um, uh, visions to this existing economic, political, and social order, not necessarily stepping in line with the United States and the Soviet Union. So let's talk for a little bit about these Cold War rivalries that, that develop. In the last years of World War II, the victorious allies will put together a new international organization with the hopes of replacing the failed League of Nations. The new United Nations, as it's going to be called, was meant to provide peace through collective security and would, unlike the United Nations, feature both the United States and the Soviet Union at its creation. 
early agreements, though, with the United Nations would quickly give way to tensions over completing political and economic ideologies. And as we've mentioned, the United States supporting notions of private ownership and capitalism um, and the support of democratic institutions, while the Soviet Union will support communist collectivist policies and authoritarian governments. The desire to spread these ideologies will contribute to Cold War tensions and at times conflicts. So the Cold War, it's going to center on those tensions caused be, as the United States and the Soviet Union are each going to attempt to spread their support for their own economic and political systems. The Soviet Union, as you can see behind me here, is going to create a satellite empire in Eastern Europe uh, of the nations that they liberated from Nazi control in World War II. The Soviet Union is going to orchestrate communist parties to become the sole governing institutions in each of these states, and they will all be beholden to the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union is also going to support communist movements in other nations around the world in hopes of creating a world revolution that would end capitalist systems everywhere. To their part, um, the, the United States would look to, um, to rebuff that. Um, the um, arms race that develops during the Cold War um, follows the, the development of new technologies um, that began during the Second World War with the development of the atomic bomb by the United States. The U.S. held a nuclear monopoly from 1945 to 1949 when the Soviet Union finally tested their first atomic weapon. The early 1950s saw the advent of even more destructive uh, nuclear weapons like hydrogen bombs and more advanced delivery systems like intercontinental ballistic missiles. In 1957, this arms race was taken to space as the Soviet Union successfully put the first satellite into orbit called Sputnik. This freaked the United States out as, as we feared that the Soviet Union had more advanced missile and rocket technologies than the United States. By the 1960s, as both the United States and the Soviet Union possessed enough weapons to destroy the world many times over, the policy of MAD, mutually assured destruction, kept both sides from refraining from using their weapons. Mutually assured destruction said that if we ever launched an attack against the Soviets, they would respond, everybody would be destroyed. Or if the Soviets ever launched one against us, we would respond, everyone would be, would be destroyed. This mutually assured destruction ultimately kept any front from using these weapons, though the threat of nuclear war would persist all the way to the end of the Cold War. Now, not everybody is picking a side and, and joining Team USA or Team Soviet Union. The non-aligned movement was born in the 1960s, as some nations did not want to see domination by either the Soviets or the Americans. Countries like China, India, Egypt and Indonesia all became the most prominent members of this new block of nations that tried to hold some sway. But challenges existed to this movement as well. Nations are still driven by their own self-interest. They're, they're not always aligned with the goals of the group as a whole. For example, India and China, two members of the non-aligned movement, actually had a small conflict, a small war with each other in the early 1960s. Um, some member states would still be closely aligned with either the US or the Soviet Union when, it, when they saw that it benefited them. So what do we wanna take from this? While World War I did not lead to widespread self-determination for colonial states, World War II does. Following the Second World War, the US and the Soviet Union are positioned as the world's two global superpowers. And the economic and political rivalries between the US and the Soviet Union will develop into an ideological conflict called the Cold War that's gonna shape the international world for the next 40 years. We'll see you next time.